so one of the things that I wanted to talk about, guys, for a few minutes as we, before we get into the word, the actual word, because if you know, if you go to our church in person, you know, I'm a type of person that when I preach, uh, I usually talk about what's on my heart sometimes, and yeah. then we actually get into the word. So let's 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 just have a little church this morning, a little chit chat, <laughs> a little chit chat. We're gonna have a little chit chat this morning with you Amen. guys, but we're all gonna get into the word. But I want to share something with you guys. You know, last night, uh, if you have me as a friend on your Facebook. Uh, if you're not friends with me or Pastor Jamie, I want to encourage you to add us on our friends list. Amen. And, uh, you know, hey, we always share things about the word on there, too, and things like that. But yeah. uh, last night, you know, I was in my study. I was in my office and Pastor Jamie, I was preparing my message for what I wanted to say today about, yeah. you know, whatever God has laid on my heart. And one of the things, guys, that I came in contact with uh, just um, I was let me say it this way. I was actually watching Joseph Prince. Mm. uh because I don't know if y'all know this, but Joseph Prince's church is in Singapore. Yeah. Singapore's time is different than our time. So they've been streaming their, their services live on YouTube. So I've just kind of been tuning in. I'll have it playing in the background yeah. as I'm preparing my message. And, uh, you know, I'm not good at multitasking, so I'll catch bits and pieces of what he's saying, but yeah. not. But I'll just let it play. And uh, how many of y'all know that when you're on YouTube, though, it usually has like on the side, if you're on the computer, Pastor Jamie, you'll have yeah. like suggested videos. Yeah, yeah. Or if you're like uh, on your cell phone, sometimes at the bottom, it has like suggested videos. Yeah. And one of the videos on there was talking about the coronavirus and the mark of the beast. Right. right. So I went ahead and I and I uh, watched the video. And in this video, this guy, a young guy, maybe about about mine and Pastor Jamie's age, uh, loves the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I don't doubt his his heart for God. And uh, but one of the things that he was saying was that the coronavirus is possibly the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really just <laughs> it really made me scratch my head, Pastor Jamie, <laughs> because I think a lot of times. In situations, guys, that we live in today, uh, especially with the coronavirus going around, you know, so many people, especially yeah. if you follow churches and, and ministries, how many of y'all know that a lot of them right now are preaching and saying, hey, you know, this is a sign of the last days. Uh, we're in the end times. This is uh, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy right. mm -hmm. and things like that. And guys, you know. I want to just just say it bluntly, you know, is that any time things happen in this world, I guarantee it. I, 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 I bet my life on it. Somebody somehow, Pastor Jamie, is going to tie it to the book of Revelation. Oh, yeah. They're going to tie it to the end times right. because that's what they instinctively think. Right. And, and so what this guy did is he took the word Corona. He took the word Corona and he took each letter, the C, mm. the O, and if you know anything about like the way the Jews interpreted uh, words and letters, the Jews or, you know, we would say is that they didn't have letters and numbers like in America and in our language, we have A, B, C. Right. And then we have our numbers, numerical system. One, two, three. Yeah. Well, in the Bible times, a lot of them didn't have that. Their A was their one. Mm -hmm. Their B was their two and so forth. Right. So what this guy did is he took the numeric value of each letter. And what he did, Pastor Jamie, is he figured out that that equals 666. <laughs> yeah. And uh, first off, I'm going to blow some of you away. Let's, <laughs> let's just just let me throw this out there because yeah. I'm, I'm going to be brave today. And I'm just going to say it to you guys yeah. bluntly. Oh. And, and, and you don't have to agree with me. But if you're watching this video, if you're listening to this video, I want to challenge you. And that's my challenge to y'all. I want to challenge each and every one of you that are watching this video. I want you to challenge, uh, be challenged to do research. Right. Don't just believe what your preacher said. Don't believe what I tell you. Don't believe what Pastor Jamie tells you. Research it. You know, the 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 powerful thing about our world that we live in today is that you can get on your cell phone. You can get on a computer and you can do the research. Right. There's no need for people to be ignorant. Exactly. And the first mm -hmm. thing I want to say is this, is that when you look at the book of Revelations, the Bible never says that the number is 666. Mm -hmm. It says that the number is 666. Mm -hmm. So, and it says that the number is the number of his name. Right. Okay. So 
that, that, that's, that's what I want to say, is that in the, in the Bible says, guys, that it's going to be a mark upon the hand. Now, I know a lot of people right now, uh, if you're watching, you know, Christian television, a lot of people saying that well, we're going to get a chip. You know, mm-hmm. there's gonna, they're going to put like some kind of chip in our hand and they're going to be able to tell us where we are. And you right. know, that's what 5G is all about. Well, guys, if you want to be biblically accurate, it doesn't use the word when the Bible says you're going to receive a mark upon your hand. The Greek word there is literally upon. It doesn't mean in the hand. Mm-hmm. It means upon the hand. So if you want to say that them putting a microchip or this 5G, you know, some kind of chip in your hand is going to be the mark of the beast, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. Because the word there is not in yeah. the hand. It's upon okay. the hand. Yeah. And it even goes on to say that it's going to be upon the forehead. Right. And so I- I'm just using all that just to explain to you guys is that, you know, we need to do more research. We also need to understand is that when you read the book of Revelations, or let me just say it this way, Pastor Jamie, yeah. if I can. Whenever y'all guys read the Bible, whenever I read the Bible, one of the things that you have to do is that you have to remember that you are reading letters because the Bible is made up of different letters yeah. by different authors. Right. And what they are doing, guys, is they are writing to specific people, to specific churches, and they're sharing information mm-hmm. about the things that they are going through. I'm going to say something that's going to blow you away. The Bible was never written to you and I. Right. I have a Bible right here in front of me, but it was never written to me. Now, I read it and we preach from it because we gleam from it. And yes, yeah. I believe God speaks to us from it, but we are reading somebody else's mail. Right. We are reading something that was written to a church, to to uh, 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 an apostle, to a prophet, uh, to the Corinthians, to mm-hmm. the Romans. Paul and all these people were writing to a specific people. So, guys, whenever you read the Bible, what you need to ask yourself is, who was the writer writing to? Right. When he wrote the book of Romans, who was he writing to? Yes. Another question you need to ask yourself is that, how would they have understood the letter? Right. Right. How would they have understood this language that's being shared in the Bible? And uh, because a lot of the language that you read in the book of Revelations, Pastor Jamie, is not to be taken literally. Yeah, It's definitely. to be taken, uh, how would you say it, Pastor Jamie? Help me out. It's like, a, I would say a lot of the stuff in, in the book of Revelation is uh, symbolic. Yes, it's symbolic. Yeah. It's uh, okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, and, and, and I know I'm saying a lot, you guys, but I'm just throwing it out there yeah. because I, because I feel like, if these people go on YouTube and they're brave enough to say what they believe, I should be brave enough to come on here and say what I believe. Amen. And and I'm not I'm not you don't need to believe what I'm telling you. But right. what I'm asking you to do is to go research it, is to go study it. Uh let me give you an example. The Jews in in every language in every society, people have their own way of speaking. Yeah. Like if I were to say today, Pastor Jamie is a pain in the neck. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't literally mean that Pastor Jamie is a pain in my neck. Right. That that that, that that's a that's a uh, it's just a figure of speech. Metaphor, it's yeah. a metaphor. It's yeah. not to be taken literally. So let me say this to you guys: mm-hmm. when you read the Book of Revelation, and let me say this: it's not the Book of Revelations with the S. It's mm-hmm. the Book of Revelation. Yeah. But when you read the Book of Revelation, the the Bible says in the in that particular book, it says. That the stars are going to fall from the sky. Mm-hmm. It says that the moon is going to turn black, Pastor Jamie. Yeah, yep. And and and, uh, and the sun will no longer give its light mm-hmm. and all of these things. And you guys, the way most people read that is they literally believe that that, 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 that is going to happen. Right. But the problem is, guys, is that you are reading language that is not to be taken literal. It's a metaphor. Mm-hmm. Just the way I said, Pastor Jamie is a pain in my neck. You would not take that literally because we understand how the language is used today. Right. Well, in Bible times, when somebody said the stars were going to fall, uh, the sun was going to stop to shine. Yes. They didn't mean literally. What right. they meant is that some nation, 
some religious system was going to fall, Pastor right. Jamie. Am I right? Yes. That some religious Amen. system, some system was going to fall. So Amen. the stars, the moon, all of these things, they're symbolic, not to be taken literally, right. but they are symbolic of people and of nations and specifically of yeah. Israel, Pastor yeah. Jamie. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if you're wondering, like, how does Pastor Larry know that? Well, if you read your Old Testament, there's plenty of times in the Old Testament that say uh, it's it speaks about old wars, like between the Babylonians yeah. and the Assyrians and the Egyptians when they would come up against Israel. And every time that they came up against Israel, God would judge those nations or he would eventually judge them in the exact same language. You can find these scriptures in the Old Testament in Isaiah, Jeremiah, different scriptures that say that. Egypt, the stars over your land are going to fall. Yes. The sun is going to go dark over you, Egypt, or this the moon is going to go black over you, Assyria. And God, this is a prophecy over them. But we know that hundreds of years ago when these wars happened, the sun didn't go dark and the stars didn't fall. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today, right? right, right Literally. Right, Jamie. But here in uh, Matthew 24 and, and in Revelations, the same types of scriptures and language is used again. So why would it all be symbolic in the Old Testament and all of a sudden be literal here in the New Testament when the Bible talks about it? All, all that Pastor Larry is saying is that these are ancient figures of speech. Right. Just like we use figures of speech today when he said the pain in the neck thing, that's a figure of speech. Well, of course, they use figures of speech in the Old Testament and, and all throughout the Bible as well, too. They were figures of speech. So you just have to do your diligent research and figure out, like, what what's what's intended to be taken literal here and what's intended to be taken as symbolic here and uh i, I believe that a lot of stuff in revelation is symbolic yes amen so, so okay so just i'm gonna say one more thing and then we're gonna move on okay because I, this is not an eschatology yeah. uh, study of end times lesson but i want to now i'm gonna say something right here it's gonna be real strong it, it might ch challenge you to really think but most people most christians and i myself okay i'm saying this for myself I was taught that the book of Revelations is in the future, that, mm -hmm. that it's still going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But again, you guys, we got to go back to what I said previously. Whenever you read any book in the Bible, you have to ask yourself, who was the author written to? Right. And when did he say these things or this was going to happen? Now, right. When you read the book of Revelations, the very, very first verse, and I have my Bible, the book of Revelation, yeah. chapter one, verse one, it says this, you guys, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servant, watch this, things which must shortly Come take place. Amen. So notice what it says. It says that God is is uh, that John is show, being shown things that must shortly come to pass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. <laughs> I would say it, Pastor Jamie. Yeah. Just say it, Pastor Lee. Okay, I would say, say it. it. <laughs> it's this. If John is seeing things that are shortly going to pass, that means that it had to have happened in John's life. Right. Because it says that, it would be shortly come to pass. Right. Guys, when you when you study when you get to the the end of the book of Revelations, God tells John, the, the apostle John, he says, Don't even seal the book. Don't right. even close the book for the time of its fulfillment is it's at hand. hand. Mm -hmm. Now, guys, now remember again, put wow. yourself in there. Put yourself in John's shoes. Here you are, you're writing this letter, and God is telling you, you're John. God is telling you, John, these things are going to shortly come to pass. You wouldn't sit there and say, well, they're going to come to pass in 2020. Mm -hmm. 2000 no, 2000 years ago, years ago <laughs> yeah. you would say it's going to come to pass in that generation. Mm -hmm. the, the generation that Jesus was speaking to was going to be the ones to see the things right. happen. Amen. Uh, you know, a lot of people right now, they're saying, well, the Bible says that there's going to be a seven year tribulation. There's going to be an a antichrist. There's going to be all of these things. Guys, there's not even the word antichrist in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. right. The word antichrist doesn't even happen right. in the book of Revelation. Now, let me give you another verse. Now, same book, Revelation chapter one and verse three. Look what he says. He says, blessed is he who reads 
and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keeps those things which are written in it Mm -hmm. for the time is near. Did y'all catch it, guys? The Bible says you're blessed if you understand these prophecies because the time of its fulfillment is near. Mm-hmm. Near when? To us? No. Near to when John wrote it. Right. When John wrote the book of Revelations, it was about to happen in his day. Right. And I believe, and Pastor Jamie believes, along with a lot of other people, right. we're not the only ones that believe this, but a lot of this stuff happened in 70 AD yeah. when the destruction of Jerusalem happened. When the destruction of Jerusalem happened, the lights went out. Mm-hmm. The sun fell. The, the the moon stopped shining. Why? Because Israel, their, their, their old covenant worship system had faded away. And I'm saying all of that, guys, so that I can remove fear from your heart. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this coronavirus is going to come and go. And Jesus is not going to come back yet. Okay. Amen. Now, do I believe Jesus will come back? Literally, I personally believe that he will. But I don't believe that we're right. living in that time. The Bible never talks about the world ending. The Bible never uses that phrase end of the world. It uses the phrase time of the end, but never the end of the world. The Bible says that the world will never end, mm-hmm. that it is a world without end. Come and on. you say, Pastor Larry, well, how come a lot of people aren't, aren't saying that? You know, I, whenever I share this information, people say things to me like, well, why do they preach that? Yeah. Well, 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 you're saying this, but why do they preach that? Guys, people preach what they know. Yeah. People only can preach what they've what they've been taught from another pastor, right. what they've been taught from somebody they look up to, from their mom, from their dad, from their grandma. Yeah. They can only teach what they've been taught. I'm asking you guys to go and do a little research. Go find out if it's possible that the book of Revelations was fulfilled in 70 AD. So, guys, I really believe that the Bible is really a history book. Yeah. But yet it still speaks to us in the sense that there's things that we can apply. But there's a lot of it that we cannot apply to us because it wasn't written to us. Yes. Yes. Come on. Think. And I, I want y'all to think about that, yeah. you know? And and so I'm saying all that, Pastor Jamie, to say this. If you want to learn more, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you want to understand more of the things that I just said about the book of Revelations, about uh, the Antichrist, who is the Antichrist? I can tell you who the Antichrist is. Mm-hmm. Pastor Jamie and I can tell you who the Antichrist is, and it's not a person. Mm-hmm. The Bible tells us specifically what the definition of Antichrist is. Mm-hmm. But we think it's we think it's you know some people think it's Donald Trump, yeah. You know some people thought it was Obama. This, you, you know, know uh, um, <laughs> well, this, I think it was in that video that you were watching. Uh, I think that general, yeah, he said that uh, trumpet. The Bible says that in the in the in the end times they're going to sound a trumpet, right? And he says, well, trumpet or is sounds like Trump, Donald Trump. So Trump is a fulfillment. And then he said, trumpet. Who's the vice president? Pence. So Trump Pence. It doesn't even say Trump Pence. It says Trump it. But he says that that's is basically for Donald Trump and Mike Pence are fulfilling scripture because their last names sound like the word trumpet. Yeah. I mean, I, we can get all kind of wild with this stuff, but you know, it's just, I think all we're trying to say is uh, a lot of times when we share things like this, a lot of people don't want to listen to us anymore. And, uh, but that, that's a shame. You know why? Because if you're strong enough in, in your faith and what you believe, you should be man and woman and Christian Come enough Come to on. say, you know what? Hey, I disagree with you guys, but I still agree with you on a lot of other things, and we can still be friends. I can still come to your church. I can still listen to what you have to say. Mm-hmm. And by all means, you know, if if you have like a different opinion, we all have different opinions about things. Then study what you believe out, you know, and and come and help us. You know, if we're wrong, Pastor Larry and I, we want to know so that we can change. You know, so all we're telling you guys to do is just. Do your research and don't just get your doctrine from a strange person on YouTube or from somebody on Facebook or a message you heard. Or, you know, a lot of people get their their um, their information from pictures on Facebook and stuff like that. You know, just do your research, you know, and the same way with this end time stuff. Do your research and figure out why you believe what you believe and why have we always believed all this stuff, you know. Go back and take a look at it and be strong so that you can be strong in your own beliefs and your own faith. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, I, and everything that Pastor Jamie and I are saying, I say it with love. I really do. You know, I mean, 
Pastor J, Pastor Larry, I believe that the revelations is future. Okay, fine. If you want to believe that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. You're not going to go to hell, yeah. but you're going to live in fear. I'm not yeah. going to live in fear. Yeah. I'm not looking to leave. I'm looking to stay. Hey. Amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> I'm looking Me to too. stay. Me too. Amen. The, I'm, the I, meek shall inherit yeah, the earth. The, the Bible, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. How amen. are the meek going to inherit the earth if we get raptured? But that's, that's right. for another topic. <laughs> But here, here, but my thing is this, and I'm saying all that to say this, Pastor Jim, mm-hmm. I'll throw a little advertisement in all there. All right, yeah, yeah. If you want to learn more, if y'all want to learn more, you want to discover more about what we're saying, Pastor Jamie and I will definitely be sharing it at our church. We share this stuff at our church. Yeah. But for those who maybe live too far and you can't come to our church, I want to encourage you to, to search on Facebook for a page called New Covenant Way. Pastor Jamie, you want to put that in the comments? Oh, section? yes, yeah. New Covenant Way. Search it on Facebook, and it's a page, and it's a group that Pastor Jamie and I started, and we're going to be doing a lot more teachings on there about stuff like this and other things. So, hey, guys, if you haven't followed the page, it's called New Covenant Way. So yeah. that's that that that's not New Covenant Church. That's gonna be a separate ministry that me and Pastor Jamie are working on. You can go on there. We actually have the website built. Go on there, like it, follow it, so you can get all our updates. And our goal is to do more teachings like this on, Amen. you know, going through the Book of Revelations. What does it mean, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. And I don't really share a lot of this stuff on my personal Facebook page because you know people like to fight. People yeah. get mad. You know, I had one person on my Facebook who was arguing with me about wearing a mask and they're supposed to be a pastor and they deleted me yeah. just because we disagreed. Yeah. And you know, we may disagree. <laughs> yeah. We disagreed over a mask and I'm like, we haven't even talked about the book of revelations, yeah. <laughs> but my thing is this, is that guys, even if you disagree with me, fine, you don't have to, I'm still going to love you. It's not a heaven or hell issue, but what I am encouraging you do to do is I want to challenge you to research it. Amen. Don't believe everything you see on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Don't like everything you see on Facebook. Just because it says Jesus, God, faith, you need to read it. Right. You need to open your Bible and say, is that what he meant? Is that Amen. the way Peter would have understood it? Because right. a lot of people are sharing things without any research. Yeah. It, they just do it because it's popular and because they're just parrot. You know, a lot of us are parrots, Pastor right. Jamie. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. Just, we just repeat true. what we hear. But I'm 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 encouraging you to not repeat what you're here to do research and again Amen. follow the page New Covenant Way. NewCovenantWay.com. Amen. All right. Advertisement. <laughs> That's a little advertisement. See, Pastor Jamie, yeah. I was, I was going to throw that in there. So, all right. If you have your Bibles, <laughs> go with me to Second Corinthians chapter four. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter four. We're going to get into this this morning. Hey guys, you know what? Just if you're if you're if you're uh if you heard what I said about the book of Revelations and you uh you you're interested in stuff like that, why don't y'all just comment and say something like uh give me more or I want to know more and uh we just kind of want to see how many people want to hear more and maybe we'll talk about it a lot more on here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, y'all comment something like that. So, all right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. Verse 7. Amen. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So, yeah, well, that's what it says. Paul says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency may be of God and not of us. Now. I want to continue my message from Wednesday. Now, if you weren't with me Wednesday, that's fine. We're going we're gonna to fill you in a little bit more mm-hmm. with this uh, story. Wednesday, I talked about what it means to be an earthen vessel. The title of my message was Fit for His Use. Yeah. And today, I want to do like part two of that message because I want to encourage you with this. The Bible says that we are called to be earthen vessels. Paul says we are Earth and vessels. What is an earthen vessel? An earthen vessel is a clay, clay pot. pot. Yeah. A clay pot. Cool. In Bible times, you guys, they had all kind of pots. They had uh silver pots, gold pots, uh different things like that. But Paul says that we are earthen vessels. Right. He says we're clay pots. And what I showed Wednesday is that 
it doesn't matter how many cracks you have in your life. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many failures you've created in your right. life or how many times you've stumbled over your own feet. Yeah. I can only say it so many ways. <laughs> but my point yeah. is this, is that God can still use you and God can still bless you. Right. Because you know what? You're an earthen vessel. Yeah. Guys, God lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Almighty God dwells in my heart and it right. dwells in Pastor Jamie's heart yes. and it dwells in your heart. But it dwells in a vessel that is earthly. Yeah. It dwells in a clay pot that has cracks, that yeah. has a little scuffs and bruises, Pastor yeah, Jamie. Exactly. But the point is, is that we have to realize that we are an earthen vessel and we are on the potter's wheel. Right. And God is molding us, Pastor right. Jamie. And God is sculpting us yep. to be what he wants us to be. Right. And so many times what we do, Pastor Jamie, is we disqualify ourselves yep. from God using us because, right. well, Pastor Larry, I still cuss. Mm -hmm. Pastor Larry, I can't be singing in the praise team <laughs> if I cuss. Right. Or Pastor Larry, I can't pray for the sick because... In church, I'm speaking in tongues, but when I get out of church, my tongue is cussing at my husband. <laughs> you understand speaking what I'm saying? Four-letter words, four-letter tongues. <laughs> yeah, and I think, Pastor Jamie, a lot of people do is they disqualify themselves. Yeah, I Because agree. they don't realize that they're earthen vessels. Yes, yeah, I agree. You know, I, what you had said uh, on Wednesday, Larry, was uh, like the pots, that the earthen vessels that he's talking about, guys, they, he said that, uh, and we said that they they were used like everyday use, and they would even use them for the bathroom at times. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, toilets. Yes, and that's that's what we are, you know. But if God can use something like that, then He can use you. And and what you're saying is so true, Pastor Larry, because I, I think that if there's anything that people are experiencing more than ever right now, it's self condemnation and it's shame and it's guilt because. You don't feel like you're you're able enough, like you're holy enough to go to right. church or to start living for God or something like that. But you're not supposed to get yourself right and ready before you come to God. He's the one who's supposed to take care of that for you. Your job come is on. just to show up and say, God, yes. I don't know what's going on here in my life, but I'm just going to receive whatever it is that you have for me. Hey, we all got cracks and we all got chips and we're, you know, we're, we're the we're the pots, you know, but we we're, we don't look perfect, right? None of us do. Hey, if, I'm probably at the bottom of the totem pole, guys. <laughs> but we all have cracks and we all have issues, you know. But don't let that stop you from going after what God has for you in your life, you know. We all say things we shouldn't say, do things we shouldn't do, you know. Maybe you did something last night, or maybe you did something this week, or something that you're kind of ashamed of. But don't let the enemy whisper shame in your ear. Come on, Pastor. You know, don't let the enemy tell you that, hey, you're not worthy enough to listen to the feed today. You're not worthy enough to go to that church. Or, you know, what are you doing listening to those messages? What are you doing listening to that worship music? Look at the kind of person you are. Look at the way you cussed your wife out, or the way you cussed your husband out the other day. Why are you listening to that? You're such a hypocrite. You know, those are the things that we play in yeah, our head yeah. over and over again. And, and I know that you guys too, but your job is just to say, you know what? God doesn't want me to have shame because the Bible says in Romans 8, I believe that there is, therefore, there is now no more Come condemnation on. for those who are in Christ Jesus. Ooh, so don't glory. let condemnation be on you today. Yes. You know, just realize, accept that, hey, we got flaws, accept that. But that's what God's for. God is is the one who wants to fix that and take you further and take you beyond those flaws. Amen. You know, I love that, Pastor Amen. Jamie. You know, so, and some of us don't realize that, hey, God, God sees our mistakes. God yeah. knows where we're at in our mistakes. He knows Amen. where we're at in our failures. You know, and when that's you right. and let's, right. listen to me, guys, and when you understand that you're an earthen vessel and, and I encourage yeah. you, if you didn't hear last week's message, go back and listen to it. You got to realize that you're an earthen vessel yeah. and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to fail. But yes. that's OK, because if God tells you, yeah. go pray for brother so and so, or you go pray for so and so. Right. You know, if somebody calls you, you know, you just got done fighting with your spouse and they're like, man, I need your prayers. At, at that moment, you're going to yeah. feel unworthy. You know, right. you're going to start condemning yourself saying, well, I can't pray for them. I just fought with my husband. Yeah. No, don't let the enemy put condemnation on That's you right. because there's yeah. no condemnation for you. God doesn't Amen. want you to treat your spouse bad. But yeah. at the same time, don't let that stop you from being a blessing to Amen. somebody else. There you go. Because it's not about you. It's, it's not yeah. about the earthen vessel. It's about right. the God inside of you. It's the yeah. God that lives inside of you yeah. that wants to come out, that, that God wants to mm -hmm. use you to be a blessing for somebody yeah. else. Right. So don't let the enemy stop you from moving forward because you've made a few mistakes. Hey, yeah. you know, maybe 
there's people out there that they judge you and they say things like, well, you know, you go to church, but you still cuss. You know, mm. you go to church, but you still like to smoke. You yeah. know, you go to church, but you still like to have a, 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 a get drunk on the <laughs> yeah, weekends. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe you do. Maybe you still like to go to the club every yeah. now and then. Maybe you still like to drink every now and then. Maybe right. you still have a cussing problem and you have a temper problem or you have a patience yep. problem. But the point is this, guys, is that you realize that, hey, I'm not going to let that stop me because I know that God is still molding me. Yes, I know true. that God that's is true. still working on me. I know that God is still trying to deal with my temper. I know Amen. God is still trying to deal with my addiction. But what you have to remember, guys, is that you have to allow God to be that's the right. one to come in and to do the work in your that's heart. Right. Praise God, somebody. Yes. Don't let God. don't let the enemy stop you. And let me say another thing, Pastor Jamie, because yeah, this ahead. is on my that's heart, good. too. That's good. Not only are you an earthen vessel, but your brother and your sister in Christ, they're earthen vessels. Yeah. And one of the biggest Come things on. that Come we on. do, and I, and I do it too. I'm speaking for myself. Yeah. <laughs> I do it too. And sometimes we judge our brothers and sisters and say, pues, mira, that's because yeah. they're a Christian. Yep. Well, yeah, how can brother so and so be a Christian? Look what he's doing. Or I can't believe she's doing that. She should be ashamed of herself. She <laughs> sings in the praise team, you know, and, and look at the way she talks and look at the, you know, That's right. and, and we start pointing the finger. And what we need to realize, guys, is the yeah. same lump of clay you're made out of is the same lump of clay <laughs> that your friends are made out of, that your brothers and sisters are made out of. And so what right. we need to do, guys, is we need to stop That's judging so one another. We need to stop having this finger wagging religion where we look down on everybody else because we yeah. try to measure them to what we think they should be. No, guys, yeah. just the way you are on the potter's wheel and God is molding you and God is shaping you for a purpose greater than where you're at now. You need to allow God to continue to mold your brother Amen. and sister in Christ because they are also on the That's same right. potter's yeah. wheel and they also are being molded to what God wants them to be. Yes. Oh, I'm getting excited, Pastor <laughs> no, Jerry. Right. We can just it. preach off of that the whole time, <laughs> yes. right? <laughs> yeah. That's so good. So let's stop pointing fingers and let's start loving. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's just start loving go. one another and say, you know, brother, I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to help you. Amen. Again, Amen. I want to say this, and I said this in the lesson, the first lesson on Wednesday night. I'm not saying it's okay to sin. God right. is not pleased, guys, when we live in sin. Mm -hmm. God is grieved when we do things right. that are not pleased to him because right. he has created us for a greater purpose. That's right. But what I'm trying to say is that you may do things that are not pleasing to God, but it's one thing when you know you're trying to come out of it. Yeah. When you're trying and you're desiring to come out of the struggle, don't condemn yourself and don't com don't condemn other people. Right. Because everybody has issues. Everybody has habits. Everybody has tempers. Everybody has uh, attitudes. Yeah. The way exactly. we handle things, and we're all a work in progress, Amen. what we need to do is we need to encourage one another. Yeah. We need to pray for one another, and we need to make sure that yes. we don't forget that we are all on the potter's wheel being molded <laughs> yes. and sculpted because we are all earthen vessels. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. All right. So let me show so you good. something else. So, so remember, we're earthen vessels. Now go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. You say, Pastor Larry, why are you getting excited? I'm sorry, guys. That's, that's Pentecost. That's that Pentecostal <laughs> coming out of you, okay? Amen. I'm sorry. I went to a Pentecostal church where we yelled, shout, ran the house. So it, it comes out of me every once in a while. Amen. All right. John chapter 4, verse 7. Amen. Now, look what it says in verse 7. It says, and a woman. Of, now, I preached on this Wednesday, but I want to bring out something else in this. It says, and a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. And then it says, uh, where did I go? Buy food. Verse nine. Mm -hmm. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman for Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Yeah. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it was that says to you, give me a drink, you would you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Mm -hmm. right. now, oh, I love that. Notice Jesus comes to this woman and Jesus tells her, give me a drink. Mm -hmm. and, and she says, you know, we're not supposed to hang out. 
Yeah. You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Now, how yeah. many of y'all know, if, again, I don't have time to go through everything because this is just a, a part two. Yeah. But in part one, I talked about why there was Jews and why yeah. there was Samaritans. So we're right. going to pass all that, Pastor Jerry. Right, right. But there's a reason why she, she looks at him as a Jew and he looks at her as a Samaritan. Yeah. So uh, and he goes on to say, the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gives us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Verse 13. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Mm -hmm. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Amen. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. Now, I want to yes. stop right there. So let's let me review this real quick. Jesus finds this woman and he tells her, give me something to drink. And she says, why do you ask me? I'm just a Samaritan. Right. And Jesus tells her, if you knew the gift of God, mm. And if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you would ask me to give you a drink. Right. And then she goes on to tell Jesus, yeah. hey, well, you know, you don't even have a bucket. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how are you, you going to get the water? Yeah. With? <laughs> how are you going to give me water when you don't yeah. even have a bucket mm -hmm. to draw from? And right. Jesus tells her what? The water that I'm going to give you is going to be a well inside of you. Amen. And she tells Living Jesus. Water. Yeah, she tells Jesus. Yeah. And you know what? Then let me have this water. Yes. And in the next sentence, I love it because Jesus doesn't even talk about the water anymore, Pastor mm -hmm. Jamie. Yeah, yeah. He tells her, okay, you said you want the water. Now go get your husband. Yeah, right. And she, so notice what Jesus does. Jesus goes to her sin and says, bring your husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. J you know, Jesus could have said, here's the water, right. Pastor Jamie, but he didn't. Right. He said, Go get your husband. And I believe the reason why Jesus did that. This is my opinion. This is just something to think about. I think Jesus asked her to go get your husband because Jesus wanted her to know that even in the midst of your sin, even in the midst of your failure, I want to give you something that will quench your That's thirst. Right. Like nothing ever has. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I he love can still that. Speak to us in the midst. Yes, of our, God can still thing. give us something even in our mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God wants to bless you guys even in your mess. Yeah. The, the, what she was gonna receive was a gift. Yeah. It was not based on how well she was living because we know she was an adulteress. Right. It right. wasn't based on because she went to church on Sunday. It was the fact that Jesus was going to give her a gift, right. a gift that all she had to do was receive. Mm -hmm. And when she yeah. told Jesus, let me have this gift, let me have this water, Jesus says, go get your husband. Right. Why? Because I believe he was trying to show her, I know where you're at. Yeah. I know what sin you're in. I know how many mistakes you've made, but it's not going to stop me from giving you something to drink. Yes. And let me tell yes. you something, guys. I want to encourage you with this is that don't let anybody tell you that God doesn't hear your prayers yes, yes. because you're not living right. No, yeah. Don't ever let anybody yeah. tell Amen. you that God is angry with you because right. God is not angry at you. God is madly in love with you. Amen. God is for you. Mm. He's not against you. Ain't it, Pastor Amen. Jamie? Yeah. God has yeah. a plan for your life. Yeah. God has water that he wants to give to you because yes. God is tired and he's not pleased that you're trying to fill your life with other things. Mm -hmm. And how many of you know that we can go after money? We can go after fame. We can go after popularity. Yeah. We can look for love in a man or a woman. But none of those things will satisfy right. us. The only thing that will satisfy us is the living water. Oh, yes. The Amen. living water of Jesus Christ. He's the only fountain Amen. that Amen. will quench every thirst. Yes. Amen. You know, what you're talking about is so important, Pastor Larry, because I know personally... Uh, Personally, I used to be that way. Like, I would feel like if my life wasn't pleasing enough mm -hmm. to God, then like he wouldn't hear me or that he wouldn't he wouldn't answer my prayer or that like I was lost. You know, if if I wasn't living right based on my own standards, you know, if I wasn't 
praying enough or reading my Bible enough, or if I made a mistake, you know, said something I shouldn't have, it's like, it's almost as if God turned his back to me, you know, and I think that there's plenty of other people out there that face that Come same on. thing. You know, you think that, man, like we've been saying, you know, I haven't been, I haven't been living right lately. So how can God hear me? How is God going to bless me? Or even like this, Pastor Larry, people might say, I haven't been living right. So that's why I got that sickness. Cool. I haven't been living right. Yeah. So that's why I had that wreck or mm. I haven't been living right. That's why my finances are in such a mess. And what what what, what are we doing there? We're we're casting a shadow on the character of God. Oh, and we're yeah. saying that come on. We're, we're, think, think about how the kind of picture we're painting of of God when we say things like that. That God literally caused you to have a wreck because you're not being good enough. And that's just terrible. You know, our God literally gave me a sickness because I haven't been living right the way I should. My friends, this is this is like really just crap because this is what we're hearing a lot every Sunday. And you know, this is these are this is what a lot of people are preaching. And we're trying to set you guys free today to say that you know what? No, like like Pastor Larry said, no, it's not good when we do those things. And yes, it does grieve God. Just like when you were younger and you stole the keys to the car or you snuck out to go see your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Uh -oh. <laughs> what did that do? That grieved your parents' heart, right? But did they come in your room and slap cancer on you? Or did they come mm, in your room come on, and, and break come on. your legs? Or did they come into your room and, and cause you like, to get in a wreck? Neglect, yeah, neglect you, cause mm. you to get in a wreck or anything like that? No. You know, you, know, you know, maybe they told you some harsh things and said, you know what? You're better than that. You know what? They convict you of what? Your righteousness. And that's what Jesus said. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to convict you of righteousness. Not convict you of sin because he's already taken care of the sin issue. Now, that doesn't mean that we still don't make mistakes today, but God's dealt with the sin already. He's that, that's done already. You know, he fixed that issue already. Now he's just got to get you to see that you are righteous. Yes. And so you got to stop disqualifying yourself today, man. You got to start seeing yourself as, yeah, you know, yes, I make mistakes, but God still loves me even in the midst. The Bible says when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. You know, and I know that and I'm going to say something pretty strong here because I just feel I need to say it. But, you know, even in some denominations, you know, if, if, if you committed adultery or whatever or or you got a divorce yeah. or whatever they won't allow you to take communion yeah. you know they won't allow you to 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 be in fellowship you probably can't sing in the yeah. choir because my, you're divorced my grandma uh my grandmother actually went through that at least that's what my mom told me a long time ago uh Come this on. was years you know decades ago yeah sure that she uh she went through a divorce and this is, this is, I'm, I'm not saying this is, I know this a hundred percent true because I'm remembering what she told me many years ago mm. and, uh, she was going through a divorce and, uh, but she was going through that because her husband was beating on her and was, was not, was doing things like that to her. And so, but when she, when they finally got a divorce, the church shunned her because wow. she was now a divorced person, but they don't know what was going on behind closed doors, you know? And I just remember her telling me that, saying that, you know, that kind of put like a that kind of put like a bad feeling in her uh, when it comes to the church. You know, it made her kind of kind of step away from the church a little bit. And let me tell you, I can understand why she would do that if her local congregation did that to her. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and just so many people, you know, they feel shunned, guys. You know, and I, I want you all to understand that, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you, you know. Amen. And hey, let me say this to you guys. If God's forgiven you, it don't matter if it's a pastor, yeah. a relative, a spouse, yes. a child. Guys, when God says it's washed, it's forgiven, Amen. it's forgiven. It's washed. And we yeah. need and we need to let it go. We, we need to stop holding people a prisoner to their past. Yeah. We need yeah. to stop holding people as prisoners to what they Come did on. yesterday, right. what they did 10 years ago. My God, friends, the Bible says old things have passed away. Yeah. Behold, all things, things have become new. Amen. The Bible says Amen. if any man be in Christ, you are a new creation. Yes, right. Maybe you shaked your hiney all night <laughs> till the cows came yeah. home back in your old days, but you're shaking for Jesus now. Amen. Hallelujah. What? You, you got to let them quit. You know, they may have judged you back in the yeah. days, but you know what? You're a new creation. Yeah. Maybe you got a divorce, but hey, only God knows your situation. Yeah. And hey, if you did it out of spite or it was wrong or whatever, right. hey, it's, it's washed. God's forgiven you. Right. In, enjoy your marriage where you're at now. You cannot fix the past. 
But God right. can wash it away, you yeah. guys. And who are we as 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 just normal people? Right. We're not God. I'm not God. Pastor yeah. Jamie's not God. I, it's not my job to hold your sin against you. It's my yeah. job to declare you are forgiven mm-hmm. and you are loved and you are a child of the Most High God. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Okay. That's good. So, <laughs> so Jesus tells her. Now, here's my message. I, I only got a few minutes to get this done. So... I, this is part two of my message, and this is where I want to get into. If you have your Bibles, look at verse 17. Verse 17 is where I really want to key in. So we're still in John 4, but in verse 17. Mm-hmm. So Jesus tells her in verse, well, let's start at 16, Pastor Jamie. Okay. In 16, Jesus tells her, go get your husband and come here. Right? Yeah. And look at what she says. The woman answered and said i have no husband Mm -hmm. jesus said to her you have well said okay now that's what i'm going to preach on notice what so jesus tells her go get your husband Mm -hmm. and she responds by saying i don't have no husband right i'm not even married (laughs) right and jesus tells her You said well. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this, because this is going to blow y'all away. A lot of you know, or you should know, but if you don't know, I'm going to let you know. (laughs) (laughs) The Bible in the New Testament, it was written in Greek. Yeah. So the the Bible was not originally written in English. Right, right. So when Jesus tells her, you have well said, what Jesus actually said in the Greek was this, Pastor Jamie. Mm -hmm. What you said was beautiful. Mm. Wow. And and that really wow. that really took me by surprise, Pastor Jamie, yeah. that he said to her, what you said is beautiful. <laughs> and wow. he says, you have said, well, I have no husband mm-hmm. for you have had five husbands. Right. <laughs> and the one whom you're with now is not your husband. Yeah. You have spoken truly. Truly. Mm-hmm. Now, she had five husbands. She had been married five times. Yeah. But Jesus tells her, hey, what you said to me was beautiful. Amen. And let me tell you why it was beautiful to God. Because God is looking for people. And this is my message. God is looking for earthen vessels that will be transparent with him. Come on. Yeah. If we right. if we're ever going right. to receive what God has for us, guys, we got to get real. Yes. I'm gonna say it that Amen. way. That's yeah. not proper English, yeah. but it's the truth. <laughs> right. We got to get real. <laughs> yeah. And we gotta let God know where we're at. Amen. You say, Well, God knows everything. Yes, yeah. God knows everything. But God is looking for you to be honest with him right. and say, you know what, God, I don't have it all together. Right. The the man I'm with now, he is not my husband, <laughs> yes. if I can say it that way. God, I don't have my temper together. God, I don't have God, I still cuss God when I get mad. God, I still do things mm-hmm. that I shouldn't do. God, I still have lust in my heart, Lord, that I want to be taken out. What are you doing? You have to be transparent. Yeah. And when you're transparent with God, God looks at you and God says, that's the one That's that right. I can give my gift to. That's right. That's the one I can bless. That's the one that I can pour healing on. Right. That's the one I can forgive. That's the one That's I can right. let them know that they're accepted. Why? Because they're transparent. Yeah. Guys, you can never get the water or the gift of God when you choose to hold back yes. and say, I don't have nothing wrong with me. I'm yeah. perfect. I don't make no mistakes. That's right. I yeah. have everything that I need. Come yeah, on, Pastor yeah. am I right? I, yeah, man. When, when I was thinking of that scripture uh, where Jesus told a parable, and he says there was a man that was praying on the street, and he said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this person, yeah. this sinner mm-hmm. who you know, who does what he does. He's, he says, I give, you know, maybe I go to church, I do all these things. I thank God that I'm not like this sinner. And then the sinner on the other side of him said, Lord, he couldn't, the Bible says he couldn't even lift up his face to heaven. He said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Yeah. And Jesus said, which one of those two men went home blessed? And it was the one that was transparent with him and said, Lord, forgive me, you know, bless me, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. The other one who thought he had it all together, he he didn't go home blessed, you know. It's like I said, uh, it's like I said Wednesday, you know what? The problem is, is, it, is that many people, after they've been doing this for so long, or maybe they've been reading their Bible or going to church or something like that, 
they think that they ain't never done nothing before. Come on. And that's the issue. You know, they've been in it so long, they've never done anything. But everybody has done something. Come everybody on. has made mistakes. Everybody has. You know, you can't sit there and act like you've never done anything wrong. Yes. It's so important that you guys... Just the same way that you're supposed to communicate beautifully with your spouse and let them know everything, the deepest secrets of your heart. You're supposed to be transparent with your spouse, right? You shouldn't hide anything. You shouldn't hold anything back. That's the same way you should be with God because even if you're not transparent with him, he knows the way you feel anyways. Yeah. So you can't hide anything from him. You know, it's better just to say, God, you know, this is how I'm feeling right now. You know, this is what I'm doing, you know, and I need you to help me with it because I can't do it. Amen. And once you do that, once you lay that down and you and you realize that it's no longer within your own power and your own strength to fix these problems, and you say it's not my power or might, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord, that's when things are going to begin to change for your life. Amen. 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 You know, I, I wrote this in my notes because it really, I, this is something that I felt the Lord gave me was that you cannot appreciate the gift of God until you have become transparent with yourself and with him. Yes, I'm going to say amen. it again. You cannot appreciate the gift of God yeah. until you have become transparent with yourself and amen. with him. That's Guys, so I mean, it, and I, let me use myself as an example because this, when I was thinking about this phrase, it really spoke to me in this mm -hmm. way, is that, Pastor Larry, why do you preach so much grace? You know, people ask me that. Why do you preach so much grace? Right. Why do you talk about God's love so much? Because I used to be a judgmental person at one time. Amen. I used to work for my salvation. I used to thought I used to think that I had to do all of these good things and yeah. then God would accept me and That's then right. God and then God would love me. And guys, until I became exhausted and tired of always trying to work yes. hard for God just so I can make brownie points with him. Yeah. When, and when that's when I learned to appreciate God's grace yeah. because I saw that I could no longer do it. Right. I saw that I was burned out trying to always make sure that I was ha making him happy, right. making him pleased when I didn't even realize that he was pleased with me already, Amen. that he loved Amen. me even when I made mistakes. Yes. And guys, sometimes there's people that they want God to do things for them. But they don't want to admit that they need God. That's right. They, they don't want to admit that, you know, that they need the Lord to help. And let me give you a scripture, okay, just to help you understand what I'm saying. Right. Jamie, go to Proverbs chapter 16. I'm trying to hurry. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16. 16. I'll read this one and the next one. It says Proverbs chapter 16, verse uh, 18. Okay, got it. Proverbs 16, verse 18. Look what it says. It says, uh, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a uh, fall. Yes. You'll see that, guys. A pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Amen. So, the, the, so what is he saying here? He's saying, look, if you have pride in your heart, it's going to lead you to destruction. I know so how many of y'all have ever heard people say, I don't need God. Everything that I have, yeah. I did it on my own. Yes. I went to work. You know, I take, you know, God doesn't help me. I'm the one that goes to work. I'm the one that goes and, and right. does everything. You know, I don't need to go to church to change. If I want to change, I'll change. <laughs> what is that? That's pride. Yeah. And friends, when you have pride in your life, then you cannot allow God to mold you. That's right. and, and, and it goes back to what I'm trying to say at the beginning of my message. An earthen vessel has to be able to be molded. Right. Guys, if you want God to bless you and you want God to do all the things that he has for you, yes, you have to receive a gift. And it's something that you cannot earn. But it all starts mm -hmm. with you being honest and saying, God, yeah. without you, I am nothing. Yeah. Without you, I cannot move. Without you, I cannot live. Without yeah. you, I can't even take the next breath. Everything that you have given me is a gift. Yeah. And Lord, don't allow pride for me to get in the way. Right. You know, th there's so many people that they don't realize that our job, Pastor Jamie, is to be the clay. That's right. Yeah. God's the potter. God's Amen. the one molding us and sculpting us. Yeah. We're just we're just the clay. Amen. But what a lot of people do is that when they see things going on in their life, mm -hmm. they want to be the mm -hmm. potter and they mm -hmm. want to be the clay. What do <laughs> yeah, I mean by true. that? They want to mold their own life. 
they want to change their own life. Amen. You know, you know, oh, well, I, you know, I don't have enough money, so I need to start doing this. Or, I, yeah. you know what, I, I need to start doing this so that this can happen. No, what you need to start doing is you need to get pride out of the That's way right. and let and, and focus on God and say, you know what, God, what am I doing wrong? Why isn't this changing? Amen. Lord, here I am. I'm, I'm laying myself on the potter's yeah. wheel and I'm asking you to mold me and to sculpt me and to change yes, me. Guys, right. let me tell you something. I tell my churches all the time. If all you want to hear about is the blessings of God, something is wrong. Yeah. Because God does want to bless you, but God also is molding you. Right. God is also sculpting you. And there should be times in your life where the Lord speaks to you and the Lord says, I don't like that attitude. That's right. I don't like the way Amen. you talk. I yeah. don't like the way you approach the cashier at, at cashier at HEBs. Right. There should be times when the yeah. Lord begins to deal with you on those things. Because if the Lord is always saying you're wonderful, you're great, right. and, and you don't do anything wrong, then I don't know what God you're serving. <laughs> because yeah. the God that I serve, he tells me, you know what? Amen. You got to get that attitude out of the Thanks. way. Yeah. You got to get that patient out of uh, patience out of the way. Yes, he loves me in the midst of my impatience. Yes, he loves me when my temper gets in the way, but he's saying to me, let me mold you. Amen. Let me yeah. sculpt you. Yeah. Because if I get pride, pride is, is something that destroys our life because pride is a man or a woman that says, I can do it myself. Amen. I can do it on my own. And most people that are prideful and arrogant, they, they live their life without God. That's right. And then when something goes wrong in their life, what do they say? Well, where's God? That's right. Where's God? You know, if yeah. God was real, why is God allowing this to happen? Because it's happening in your life because pride always right. leads to a life of destruction. Yeah. Because when you have pride, God removes his hand and God says, you do it your own way and you try to figure it out. Yeah, that's what that scripture says, Pastor Larry. It says that pride, pride comes before destruction. So what comes first? Pride. Mm -hmm. What comes afterwards? Destruction, you know. And as you were talking, I'll just say this real quick. No, you know, on. as you were as you were talking, uh, I was thinking a lot of this, like the spirit of men. You know, like I read a book one time about about men and why men don't want to go to church. And uh, I think there's a lot of men out there. We don't like we don't like people on, telling us that. what to do. Come right? on, we don't like. I'm I'm talking. I'm speaking to just men. Amen. So if, if there's any men watching right now, tell me what's going on. You know, say amen. But you know what? We we don't like we don't like to take orders, right? We don't like our wives telling us what to do or our boss telling us what to do or anything like that. We got a lot of pride in us. Come on. You know, we got a lot of we got that prideful spirit. But you know, just as men, you know, if I can just speak to men for a moment, we gotta be careful because like like the scripture says, pride comes before destruction. And you know, and I think that's and you know, in my from what I've seen, I think that a lot of destruction does come in men's lives from that, you know, from not from not wanting to be uh, moldable like yes, the clay yes. is. You know, men don't like to be moldable. We don't like to be moldable. We like to shape our own destiny. We like, we like to shape ourselves, create a life for ourselves. But we got to break that spirit and just allow God to mold us and shape us into who he wants us to be so that we can be real men, right? So that we can be the men that God has called us to be. So men, if you're watching, if you heard that, watch out out there. <laughs> and, and, and it's true. I love, and I'm glad you said that because I, 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 I was going to mention that, but I didn't have, I forgot yeah. to put it in my notes. But yeah, man, especially guys, yeah. you know, guys, you know, Me? guys don't <laughs> like, we don't like to be told what to do, yeah. you know, you know, and yeah, you may let your wife tell you what to do, but that's probably as far as it goes. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you're not going right? to let, you're not, you know, a, a lot of people, I think even if they had a woman boss, they yeah. would struggle with that yeah. because how is she going to tell me what to do? And guys, you know what you need to have? You need to let God break that. That's right. Yeah. Because God is wanting to break you from pride. Mm -hmm. hey, let yeah. me tell you something. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it bluntly. A true man of God. If you say I'm a man of God, I love God. I, I love, I want to serve God. I want to please God. Okay. Let me tell you this. Yes. If that's you and you say you want to love God and you want to uh, worship him and he's everything to you, then you got to let go of that stinking pride mm -hmm. because yeah. pride gets in the way for God to mold you. Because right. again, God is not looking for uh, vessels of gold and vessels That's of right. silver. Amen. God is yeah. looking for earthen vessels. Yeah. Again, what is an earthen vessel? It's a clay pot, a clay pot that can be molded, that can Shaped. be sculpted. Yeah. God is not wanting you to shape your own life. He yeah. is the potter. You are the, yes, clay. the clay. One more scripture. Amen. All right. And I'll be done. I promise. Thank you all for all the comments. We love you yeah, guys. Amen. Guys. I see all the comments. 
Uh, Brother Edward, thank you. Everybody, they're listening at work. Everybody's being Amen. blessed. I appreciate it. Amen. Hey, uh, guys, throw some hearts. Yeah, throw some, some likes, hearts, some love on there. If you haven't already. We're fixing the clothes. Look what it says. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, I typed in the wrong one. Matthew verse. Five. Yes. Okay. Matthew. <laughs> I love what my friend Jermaine said. I have and had uh, women bosses. It's all good here, but you're right. <laughs> hey, you're right, Jermaine. You're right I about love that, Jermaine, man. man. He's right. awesome. Appreciate you, Jermaine. Okay, look what it says. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 through 3. It says, And seeing the multitude, he went up on a, on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. I'm going to say it again. Notice what Jesus says. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Yes. For theirs is the kingdom of God, the kingdom mm-hmm. of heaven. Now, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? That means, <laughs> does that mean you're broke, Pastor Jamie, like a joke, <laughs> and you ain't got no money to broke pay your bills? Joke. No, that's not <laughs> what it means. The word poor there yeah. actually means, let me tell you what the, the Bible dictionary says. One of them says, it says that the word poor in spirit is an idiom. Mm. Literally, poor in spirit means pertaining to one who is humble with regard to his own capacities. Am I saying that mm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Notes? yeah, his own uh, capacities. Capacities. Yes. Yeah. It says, namely, it is humility in relationship to God or to be humble. So when the Bible says blessed are the poor in spirit, it's saying blessed are the humble. That's the attitude mm-hmm. that God wants us to have is a humble spirit. That's right. Yeah. It's a spirit that says, dude, I don't got it all together, man. That's right. I'm yeah. trying. God's helping me. God's the only one that's going to help me. But hey, if I if it wasn't for him, yeah. I wouldn't be where I'm at. I love what Paul said. Paul said, if it wasn't. That he said, I'm, hello, I'm getting tongue tied. Paul said, if it wasn't for the grace of God, that he wouldn't be where he was. Yeah, he right. said, it's the grace of God that has caused me to be who I am. I'm right. paraphrasing it, right. but That's you know right. what, guys? I just want to encourage you, and with this message is that if we're ever going to be everything that God wants us to be, it's it's because we have to be humble, amen, in our attitude, right. and we have to realize that, hey, God, you know what, you're sh- you're. Sh- you're shaping me. Yeah. You're molding my life. I'm just an earthen vessel. In my own abilities, I'm nothing. Yeah. But with God, I can do all things. Amen. Yeah. And don't ever get ignorant. Don't ever get prideful. Yes. You know, I'll say this and I'll close, Pastor Jamie, yeah. and then you can tell me what you think about okay. this. I know when I was in my denomination, you know, before I came to grace in our denomination, our denomination was very prideful right. because it was like, we had all the answers to the Bible. Nobody could tell us what we were doing right. because we had the truth. Yeah. And yeah. what it did, Pastor Jamie, is it created a very prideful attitude in our denomination mm. because everybody was going to hell except us. Right. <laughs> but when I started studying the Bible, I realized, and, and, and not only studying the Bible, Pastor Jamie, but when I started looking at other people who were believers and right. studied the Bible, and I knew that they had some very good, solid answers. Right. What I had to do is put my pride down, Pastor Jamie, yeah. and say, you know what? Maybe I was wrong about this. Yeah. You know, I used to believe this, and maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. And, and you know what? And that was hard for me because I'm a preacher. I love mm-hmm. to teach. And when you're a preacher and you're a teacher and people look up to you, it takes it takes some humility yeah. for you to come back right. later and say, you know what? I think I was wrong about that. Yeah. I might need to change my beliefs. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, it's it's really hard for people to apologize, you know, sometimes, you know, and uh, I, I always try to be a person that like apologizes for things, you know, like because whenever you say I'm sorry, you know, to somebody, I shouldn't have done that. It kind of just makes you feel good, too. You know, like and that person sees that you made a mistake and they mm-hmm. know that you're you're just a human just like they are. But, um, you know, you have to apologize, you know, sometimes, you know, for things and. It's like when you're like, but like you're talking about Pastor Larry, like when we're spreading that, that doctrine, you know, that we kind of figured out later probably wasn't correct. Well, we have to be Christian enough to say, Hey, I was wrong in this area. You know, I apologize for telling you this or for preaching this to you or for what I told you last week or, you know, Hey, grandson, granddaughter, I'm sorry for the way I talked to you, you know, son, 
uh, daughter, I'm sorry that uh, the way I talked for, I talked to you the other day. And we're scared because we're going to make it look, we, we think that if we do that, it's going to make us seem vulnerable and it's going to make us seem like we can't be yes, trusted anymore, yes. like we're not in authority anymore. But that's not that's not true. You know, the, the people that are in authority have to be able to admit that you have made mistakes and you have to be willing to apologize for those mistakes as well, because that makes you a true man and woman of God. You know, just be the kind of person that apologizes, you know, and don't 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 feel like, hey, if I do this, it's going to tarnish my reputation or it's going to tarnish my authority. No, actually, what it's going to do is it's going to make you more approachable. Come on. People are going to want to approach you more and they're going to say, hey. I know that I can talk to Brother Edward or I know I can talk to Lydia or Gloria. I can go to them because they apologize all the time, you know, for things that they've done wrong. So I can come to them, you know, and share with them the mistakes that I've made, you know, and I can ask them for advice on what I should need to do. So just don't have that spirit of pride, you know, don't have that that spirit that just holds you back, you know, and be willing to to say whenever you've made a mistake is what I would say. Yeah, you know, you and I, I just want to I don't know why this came in my mind, Pastor Jamie, yeah. because I, 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 you said something a few minutes ago. I was like, yeah, e even as parents, you guys, you know, if there's somebody that's watching, you know, well, I know a lot of you are watching your parents, you know, right. you need to learn to admit to your kids that you did wrong. Amen. You know, yeah. hey, you know, when I raised y'all, I, I could have did better in this area, yeah. but I tried my best. Don't don't. Don't be a person that you become prideful and say, I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, you know, right. uh, I never yelled at you yeah. or I never, you know, <laughs> yeah. called you stupid or whatever. No, you need to admit and say, hey, you know what? I, I did what I did. I shouldn't have talked to y'all that way. Yeah. I shouldn't have yelled at y'all. I, I could have been a better mother in this area. I could have did, you know, I could have worked on this better. Admit those things. Yeah. Because what you're showing your children is, hey, you know what? I'm still being, I'm still in process. Right. God still has me on still the potter wheel. He's still molding me yeah. and he's still changing me. And you know what, guys, whenever you do that, what you're saying is, God, I want the kingdom. Yes. I want, I want your That's righteousness. It. I want your peace. That's right. And, and the only way it's going to happen is when you walk in humility. And it's like what Lydia said. I saw what Lydia said in the comments. Mm -hmm. She says, it's self-righteousness. And Lydia, that's the truth. Right. If we could sum up this message, it's about breaking away from self-righteousness. Amen. If we wanted to title it Amen. that. Because yeah. that's what it is. Pride is self-righteousness. Right. It's it's saying we have it together. We don't need to change. But I'm encouraging you today to continue to stay on the potter's wheel. Amen. And the only way you're going to allow God to mold you is when you become transparent with him and say, Lord, yeah. look, here I am. You see it, Lord. I have a temper. I have things that, yeah. I, that I need to change, but I'm looking to you to continue to mold me right. and to shape me. And I promise you, you'll become better and greater yes. than you've ever been before. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you Amen. for the word today, Lord. I pray, God, that everyone that's listening today, Father, I pray you thank touch you, them. Father. I pray, Lord, that I said something and Pastor Jamie said yes. something that will encourage your people today. May they just Touch continue to serve you, Lord. May they look to you, God. Lord, yes, God, we have a little scuffs and we have a little cracks as vessels, as earthen vessels, Lord, that we need to yes, allow God. you to mold. But we thank you, Lord, that even though in the midst of all of our struggles, in the midst of our mistakes, Lord, you love us, Lord, for we are only human, Lord. But we look to you, the source of life. The, the one that can change us and mold us to be better men and women of God. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, Lord, in our lives. And I pray, Father, that the word that Pastor Jamie and I spoke would just take root in each and every one of their hearts and even in our hearts. That it would just flourish, God, and that we would come back to these things, Lord. And remember that we are still in process. That God is removing away the self-righteousness and giving us a spirit of humility so that we can be fit for the master's use. We can yes. be fit for his use so that we can be uh, ambassadors so we can be representatives of the kingdom. And Father, if there's anybody, Lord, that is watching, Lord, that has a prayer request, I pray, Lord, that you touch all of yes, them, Lord. Lord. Lord, touch everybody, Lord. Heal every person, Lord, that's struggling with the coronavirus. Amen. Lord, there's anything that they have, Lord, I'm asking you to minister to them in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Lord, Jesus and I pray, name. God, for everybody that will give yes. and the offering, Lord, touch them. Supply every need according Jesus. to your riches in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Guys, I just want to encourage you before we close. And Pastor Jamie, you can say something okay. too. Uh, I just want to encourage everybody to please be faithful in your giving. Uh, don't forget, it, it is Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. So, hey, just just act like we're in a church building and the offering baskets there. Go online. <laughs> yeah. Give your offering uh, because, hey, like I said, every week we still got bills and uh, Reliant doesn't take faith. They take Amen. money. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Amen. Hey, if any of you guys live in El Campo, 
And uh, you want me to come pick it up for me, or if you want to drop it off here, that's fine. I can do that too. I'm a, I'm a delivery driver, so I can, I can do that too. Amen. So don't let anything hold you guys back from that if you guys want to give. So, but uh, we, we just thank you guys for tuning in. You know, of course, you know, we love you guys, and we hope that you have a blessed rest of the week. You know, stay safe, stay full of faith. And, uh, you know, share this message, you know, share this message and spread the word about God's goodness. Amen. So uh, we'll see you guys right here uh, Wednesday at 715 p.m. That's when we'll be live next. So we hope to see you guys there and we hope you have a blessed week. Yes. We love, love you guys. guys. Take care. Bye.